The Hilltop Glove Podcast is sponsored by Mid-Carolina Service Company. Mid-Carolina Service Company is the first name to search for your residential or commercial HVAC needs in Lexington and surrounding areas. Just go holla at Jason and Clint. They'll hook you up on the air conditioners, on the restaurant equipment, refrigerators, refrigeration, ice machine repair. They've been doing this for years. I've known them cats forever. Family owned and operated since 2006, they pride themselves in their quality work and customer relationships. Call 803-356-4153 or visit midcarolinaserviceco.com for no obligation quote for service today. The Hilltop Club Podcast is sponsored by True Brilliance Entertainment. True Brilliance is a production, promotions, and management company dedicated to connecting artists and producers across the Carolinas to music industry professionals. Several of their clients have placements both domestic and internationally as a result of their services. Are you an artist or producer looking to build meaningful relationships within the music industry? Then True Brilliance is for you. Check them out at paramilitary.com. That's spelled P-A-I-R-A military.com. This episode of the Hilltop Glove podcast is sponsored by Bob's. Bob's is a Columbia-based retailer of over 100 Black-owned products from 20 Black-owned businesses. Bob's offers a wide range of items from household cleaning, cosmetics, and everything in between. With every visit to Bob's, you support Black-owned businesses, giving them the opportunity to grow and establish connections with our community. Bob's is located inside the Noma Warehouse at 2222. Sumter Street in Columbia, South Carolina. Visit their website, weshopbops.com for in-store pickup or to find out more. Bops can also be found via social media on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at We Shop Bops. When you stop by, tell them the Hilltop Glove sent you. Bops brings quality Black brands to the Columbia community. Hilltop Glove Podcast is sponsored by Red Rooster Sports Bar and Grill. Red Rooster is your neighborhood bar and grill serving the best wings, burgers, and baskets in the Met. Like the amazing food, the bar is always on tap, and there's plenty of screens to watch the big game. Red Rooster is the Midlands' premier meetup spot for local car and bike clubs, fraternities, and sororities. Staff is dedicated to accommodating all kinds of parties and events. If you're looking to catch a game, have a bite, and a drink, look no further than the Red Rooster. Red Rooster is located at 7500 Wilson Boulevard, Columbia, South Carolina. For more information, visit RedRoosterSportsBar.com or visit them on Facebook, Instagram at Red Rooster Sports Bar. Go where the winners go. Welcome to the Hilltop Glove Podcast. 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 Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Hilltop Glove Podcast. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Miss Jamika Murphy. Jamika is a brand strategist, life coach, clothing designer, event curator, and blogger. She is the president of 24K Enterprise Consulting, which specializes in creative directing. She offers an array of services such as photography, content slash social media strategy, virtual assistance, branding, and business strategy. Jamika's mission is to help clients identify their why and understand their why in order to achieve success. Her passion for people is the reason for so much success in her life this far. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you for being here throughout this whole process because she's been with so us patient. for a while. So no problem. It's been a pleasure to be here and watch you all create. It's Aww, wonderful. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. I know we can probably learn some stuff from you too because yes. you do a lot. Yes. Girl. So I need all the tea. I need the gems. I need the information. So tell us a little bit about your childhood. What was it like growing up? Where did you grow up and what influenced you? Okay. I grew up in Brooklyn, Brownsville, Brooklyn, to oh, be exact. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hold it down, Brownsville. Wait, Hold it down. why? Why was the, oh, wow. <laughs> you came out so smooth. And, and, uh, <laughs> you don't give me the, that vibe. Yeah, not See, at all. Not at all. Yeah, but yes. And um, 
at the time, it, it wasn't a really great place to grow up. Yeah. But the one thing that my mom gave me was books. Ah. And I fell in love with books and I just fell in love with creating through the books because a lot of times we didn't have money to go different places or vacations and things like that at the time. I would read the books and my mind created the space that I need. Oh. So that is like where my background began and even my background in business at five years old, I started my own business. Wow. <laughs> what kind of business, what kind of was, business that? was that? Yeah. I was selling cakes. And look, I am not a baker. <laughs> That's when I realized that it wasn't the product. It was me. You're a hustler. And how you treat people and the way your strategy. And that, at that time, I learned that because you trust me. Five years old. Yeah, I was not. It was not. Uh, it wasn't good. But <laughs> you were selling them though. They were moving. Yeah. You were moving them cakes. The whole block. They was. But when you gonna make some more? I'm like. <laughs> you like I these cakes? Make these? Because <laughs> look, look, because you know some of my cousins, they was rough. They me, this ain't good. No, this ain't it. No, but the other people, they they was they were buying it. Because I went, I would go from house to house, and I would speak to the people. Hi, how you doing? I'm buying this. I'm mean, selling this. Would you like to buy? And it, I knew they were buying into me, mm -hmm. not necessarily uh -huh. just what I was selling. So that's my background. And just also that's where my background in community came from, mm -hmm. because we all didn't have a lot. So we band together in a lot of things like getting together, put, collecting bottles and going buying stuff to have a little party. Like <laughs> yeah. that helped me with wanting to see the community do better. Wanting to see the community grow and having that sense of community, no matter what you have, if we have each other, we have a lot. We all we got. We all right. Do yeah. you have any uh, siblings? I do. I have a brother and a sister. I'm the oldest. My brother, the youngest, he's a bodybuilder. He's actually in the competition right now. Good luck. <laughs> um, hey, good luck. <laughs> a pro bodybuilder. Okay, I got to put that out there. Oh, he's sponsored? <laughs> yes. Oh, he pro. He pro. He's <laughs> yeah. sponsored. He pro. And my sister, who's seven years younger than me, she is, well, she works with me. Like, we all, it's a family business. Yeah, anyway. I saw that when I was looking yes. at your website. Mm -hmm. And, but she, at her regular job, she is a developer for, basically they develop educational programs for Google or Microsoft to teach their people how to Train. Oh. So she, I like that type of stuff. Yeah. Training materials. I'm right. all about teaching people, but making it simple mm -hmm. training. And she, and that path came along through different types of jobs that she was in. And then actually, that particular job, she what they said she wasn't qualified for, mm -hmm. but she went after it anyway because she knew that she really was. Like her resume did not say it, but her mind, her soul did. Once she began, it working out well for her. Beautiful, beautiful. That's always good to hear. Back to those cakes. I'm five <laughs> years old with them cakes. What kind of cakes was you making? Oh, strawberry and sweet potato pie. Like really? strawberry cakes. Yes, I had a little. And this, I don't know how old y'all are, but I'm 44. Uh -huh. So it was like an easy bake oven, but not really. Like this, and I actually still have it. Like, you still have it. You have it. Wow. Yes, it's so old. That's so work? cool. I don't know. Hey, at least you still have it. Because we were just talking about documenting. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, hold actually, on to it. I stopped baking because one time I did, and my brother was like, I don't want this dog food. Oh, Lord. But after that, I just gave it all up he completely. Up. Oh, my goodness. But then it was strawberry cake, potato pie, because I watched my grandmother make sweet potato pie. And I was like, Grandma, teach me. And that goes back to one thing where you guys were talking about yeah. earlier about passing Same. down yes. recipes. Yes. If you don't pass down different things, we'll never know. Right. We'll exactly. never have it. And, and then my mom would make strawberry cake. So she told me that. Hey. And yeah, but I still, baking is just not it for me. <laughs> See, y'all got me feeling bad. I'm 32 years old. I ain't never been in the kitchen making no Thanksgiving meals. Oh, Jesus. So, uh, I feel like I need to talk to my family. Yeah. Like, yeah. Somebody like, has to teach yeah. you. Someone has to teach and you. you don't need to feel bad. It's not you. It's okay. them. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that does lead into this next question because you just had to hear this because, because, all right, you're a female, you're an entrepreneur. 
We know you wear many hats. You have to, right? Yes. But I just got to know from this first thing about the five-year-old bacon. Do you consider yourself a creative or a hustler? Both. Okay, explain. Explain this a little bit to us. Because my soul loves to create. Mm -hmm. Ah. Like, art is everything to me. Like, every part of art. Every part of it, music, theater, theater like everything. Mm -hmm. So for, for performing to actually yeah. making visual. visual. All of that is like to my soul. However, <laughs> coming from a family that hustled in a different type of way. That's, thank you. Thank <laughs> you, you know? for saying it like that. Yeah. The hustling part still is in me. So I take what I know as far as creative and use that because I feel like a lot of people want to have businesses. They want to be creatives and make money, but they don't want to hustle. Point. They want to sit back and just be like, I made this. Yeah, everybody supposed to love it. Good point. No. <laughs> like, how are you putting it out there? What are you doing? What are you making them want from you? Because you put your heart and soul into it don't mean someone wants it. The value. Yes. Or Create value. <laughs> and a lot of times is you have to push it out there. No one is going to just come. When you have, say you're making a song and people are, hundreds of songs are pushed out a day. How is your song going to stand out if you're just sitting there, you're not doing anything? Yeah. And I have found that a lot of people just, they feel sorry for themselves and be like, Nobody's liking my music mm -hmm. or nobody's buying for my business. <laughs> but what are you doing to make that happen? Yeah. Just because you open a business don't mean somebody's going to come to it. Yeah. That's when the hustling should kick that, in. That's why mm -hmm. I say I'm both. Because I'm not waiting. Yeah. I'm not waiting for anything. That's that yeah. New Yorker. <laughs> no, I like it. I know New York is like hustle. That's why I, like I, I learned about them. I, that's why I went up there for a couple of days. I said, so y'all do a lot of walking. And I don't care if it's a good product or not. And that's what I like, which, which you started off with that. Talk about that being five years old and being out there baking and not being good people buying your personality and buying the idea that you were selling behind it, not just the product. Because, man, I can harp on so many, quote unquote, creatives and artists out here who actually have a shit product, but they do great marketing. Yes. Great it's, marketing. Soldier Boy should have never made it. <laughs> Great marketing. Yes. It, was, it was about timing. His oh, timing. timing and marketing. Mike Mar Mar Jones. Timing. Just going yes. back old school. Mike yes. Jones. Mm -hmm. Why anybody know this man number? Right. Marketing. Blew it up. Made it look good. Marketing is amazing. And that's what you see a lot. And I know they always talk about the machine when it comes to artists and, artists and creatives and how the machine can literally make you. Sometimes you don't have a machine and you have to be your own machine. De and that's yes. where the hustle comes in, correct? Yes. And I am. I don't agree with people feeling sorry for themselves. If something's not happening, make it shake. Especially this day and age. In so many make ways. It make it shake. Make yeah. it shake. Because <laughs> faith without works is dead. Yes. It's like, you can't sit there and just be like, oh, I'm a, it's going to happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> get up mm -hmm. and make it happen. You yeah. can believe that it's on the other side, but you got to get up and walk. Other side. And cold, closed mouths don't get fed. Preach. Right. Like, Ooh, he prophesizing up here today. Yeah. Go ahead now. I like the church. I like when church come on the podcast. She'll tell you. I like when the church comes Look, to the I'm podcast. I'm a PK too. So. Oh, really? Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> we're like, we're going to yeah. be in sync sometimes. <laughs> That's how you know we've been around each other. Yeah. All right, man. All right. That made my day. Question. All right. So we figured out that you have a balance between your creativity and your hustling, right? And the importance of it. Now, how do you keep your creativity flowing when you're doing and handling multiple projects because you do at once? Do you have to let it go at times just to become a business-oriented mind hustle, like mindset person? Yes. That is, um, wow, that's a great question because I feel as if I just experienced it. Right. Like, yeah. I had so many different things going on for different clients that didn't have time to feel and with creativity, for me, it's feeling. I was doing a lot of thinking, but not yeah. feeling. And I just felt weird. I need to be creative. It's to feel. Right. Yes. And that does happen. That balance sometimes with creativity, it can go away. So I will shut down. And right now, I don't even watch certain TV shows. Yeah. I don't do certain things because I don't want it to cloud my judgment mm -hmm. and my creativity because I'm so deep into creating and I don't want anything to come into that. But when I'm trying to find my creativity again, I definitely just 
take time away from everything. I love silence. Yes. Silence is like my best friend. I agree. My husband, he knows he will be in a room with me and I won't talk for four hours mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but you're fine. Like, yeah, right, you're fine. Right, yeah, I'm not angry. He, and he knows it. And, but then I'll bust out with some type of idea <laughs> or something. But I just love to just sit in silence and let my spirit talk can to I, me. Can I be weird for a second? Go ahead. All right, so you know what that's called. Mm. Then she's yeah. downloading. But even better than that, the absence. Create, that's where birth comes mm-hmm. from, the void. And yeah. so you create void with the silence. Yes. To allow you to birth. birth. Yes, yes. And I know a lot of people don't understand that. And I know growing up, my father understood that about us. He was like, all right, I know for you all to be geniuses, he always teased about this. He's like, man, my dad would say this. He'd say, man, if y'all really, if you all really understood how smart y'all are, y'all be dangerous. Yeah. But he would understand. He'd like, go let them sit by themselves for 30 minutes to hour. Don't bother them. Just go. Let them go over there. And as a child, I was like, why is he making us sit over here by ourselves? <laughs> like, we didn't do nothing wrong. your thoughts. Yeah, I didn't understand what that meant. I thought it was punishment. Yeah. It's not punishment. Yeah. And especially as a creative in this day and age, with the amount of bar- the barrage of <laughs> inputs and stimuli that we have, you do have to take yourself, put yourself to the side so that you can breathe. And I know you know this. Yeah, I'm, I just wanted to reiterate because you do a multiple of things, but you've been with us sitting here for about three hours. I've never heard your phone go off. <laughs> And I like that because when people have their phone going off and I'm just like, how do you deal with that all day? Like hearing notifications. No, I cannot do that. (laughs) Like literally sometimes I'll ride with no music on. Yeah. No, I can't do that. I really can't. <laughs> really? Like, my son I'm addicted music. to music. What kind like, of music? Everything. Oh, okay. Like, I'm talking about every, any and every type of music. I you can listen, listen to Island it. Vibes. You yes. listen to jazz. Yes. You can do some like, R&B. Frank Sinatra is like one of my favorites. You really New York. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> really New York right now. <laughs> But I have to have music. It is also a part of my worship, just not just with God, but just yeah. with life, mm-hmm. yes. period. Yes. So I need music all the time. Yeah. It's probably a, I don't know, it's an addiction. That used maybe? to be my, that was my <laughs> problem. I had a problem with it. I would play one song. Oh, ask him. Over and yeah, over that's again. My just one song. Like, I'm good oh, with that one song. One I play my little headphones. This going to be the last <laughs> yep. time. Last mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. But it don't ever be the last song. Nope. No. Mm-hmm. Not a problem to a Tribe Called Quest. I'd be playing. <laughs> Man, I'd be playing one Tribe Called Quest song. I I Which be... one? So I have two songs that I really like to play over and all, over and over again. So Rhythm, Devoted to the Art of Moving Butts. And then also a pen and a pad. Pen and okay. pad. I'll keep playing it. If I'm ever moving or if I'm trying to clean, there's certain songs that I just play. Over, yeah. It puts me in a mindset to yes. be able to do what I need to do. Yes. So I can agree with you on that. But with my phone, it's, if you look, it's a lot of notifications on it. It's from TikTok. It's from Facebook Messenger. Everybody asking me all types of questions. But I know for sure that, okay, I'm in this space right here, right now. And I'm devoted to this space right here, right now. So just, I have to give this my attention. My wow. And some clients will be jealous if I'm with another client and I'm giving them that attention, mm-hmm. don't let it be on social media. That's where you at. That's right. why you're not answering Respond. my call. Yeah, like, stop. Yeah. Pay attention to that. Yes. That's why I'm scared of the social media yeah, sometimes. It is because it's like dangerous. It, tra- it tracks you. Sometimes I can't post something. I'll be like, all right, let me wait till this is over with. The post something because people will literally be like, oh, they'll get jealous. Yeah. Dang. Yes. Yeah. Good it's lord. It's that serious. Yeah. It's crazy, but I like to give people, when I'm giving my time or attention, I like to give my full time mm-hmm. and attention. When you all were doing the other interview, I'm listening. I'm also imagining what the other person is saying based on you guys, what you were saying. So I'm interested in listening to that now because it was so interesting just to hear one side. Yeah. But I like to just put myself right there and just feel that moment. Present that's moment awareness. Yeah, that's I respect that. I know do you, you were meditate? Just over there yes, yeah. I do. See, I, I do. Too. I know. I be picking up Agreed. vibes. I'm a vibe yes. person. Yes. I'm a vibe. I'm Look, Tamaya will read the yes. wall. See, I yes. feel it. I feel well, it. I'm an empath and a highly sensitive person. Okay. So, whew, like, I have to kind of have those releases because you can feel every like it like that. Mm-hmm. But I've always been that way. But I really do like it that way because I feel like you can relate to other people better. One of the biggest issues I feel even in business, people think about themselves, not about the customer. True. And True. when you go into it that way, you like, oh, I'm going to make my logo this way because that's what I like. Can your customer read it? 
Can they relate can to the customer? Read the font. Does they it can communicate read. well? Is right. it inviting, engaging? Exactly. Uh, so diverse. <laughs> you cannot. You have to be able to not be so selfish. Yeah. And pick up on other things from other people. And oh, open. I, one thing I say often is remain open. Mm-hmm. If we remain open to our feelings, our heart. So it's many, hard to do though. Yeah, it is. Because sometimes I, it's overwhelming. Yeah, it's very, yeah, it very. can be overwhelming. But it does help make you a better person in the long run. It does. That kind of goes right into the next question, enhancing a brand. So branding is one of the most important things to consider when establishing a business. How do you enhance each client's brand? The first thing that I do is I ask them why. Why are you doing this? And I don't take on just any client. If I feel like you tell me, oh, I just want to make some bread. Guess what? You're not for me. You're not for me. Oh, wow. It's somebody That's else discipline. that can take you on and maybe help you. I want to know what's your passion behind what you're doing because that will keep you going. Mm-hmm. Not making money, your passion will keep you going. When you are not going viral, your passion and your why will keep you going. So you have to have something else to hold on to besides money or being popular. If it's a true cause and dedication behind what you're doing, you will hold on to it. So that's the main thing I ask. And sometimes they don't know how to answer. Yeah. So I will break it down into smaller pieces of what was the idea behind this? And then eventually they will find their why. And we work from their why and okay, how do we showcase that? Whatever your business is, whether it's Upstate Circle Friends is also one of my clients, or if it's someone that does hair, whatever that is, let's take that and show you to the people. And I think a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, they miss that whole process sometimes. It's like a disconnect. Yes. But it's also about who you hire. Let's not replicate. I'm not like if somebody has something good going on. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. However, be unique. Yes. Like in the social media world, people are trapped with trying to be everyone else. I'm not against social media. I love it. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's great business. Yes, for it me. Is. However, you do have to stand out. You can't just do, oh, I'm going to do this challenge. What they got to do with your hair brand? Like, why is you over here doing good knees when... What's your Somebody why? Needs What's your why? Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> why are y'all out here doing good needs? <laughs> but you're Everybody right. I like good th- needs. that you said that about challenges because everybody, everybody's doing these challenges. Everybody's watching the same. What is it when they do the little competition? People. When you know they, I'm bad with it. When people rap against each other or sing against each other. Oh, shut up. The, uh, the little verses. The verses. Yeah, Everybody yeah, watching yeah, the verses. Yeah. Like, and it's, oh my gosh, like. What's your why? Yeah. Why are you doing that? People that's don't even ask themselves why. No. I've never watched not one versus. You're right, but that's why I think it fell off. Yeah. And now, I, now yeah. I did, but it was the pandemic. Like, I was, was going off, crazy. But that's why it fell time. off. It had a why at that <laughs> moment. When now the why went away, it's, it's gone. gone. Mm-hmm. You prove your point. Yeah, you prove your point. We're going back outside. Yes. We're going back outside right. I can actually go so to your show. You Exactly. And there are some people that are still afraid of going outside, but people yeah. want to get back to that feeling of being around other people and actually seeing Smelling and locked. seeing human beings. Much as sometimes they <laughs> don't smell, smell that yeah, great. Yeah, let me smell, yeah, smell you. <laughs> yeah, you're real. But everything is not for you. Sometimes it's just, yeah, it's fun, but should you put that into your brand? Because yeah. people will look at it and we got to be honest and be real at how people look at you. Yep. Like, people will be like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want, I can't trust her to do my nails. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. Yeah. You have to be real and realistic about the expectations of your customers. So, you don't have to do everything that everybody is doing out there. Simplify. Right. And how do you get that across to them? Yeah. Because <laughs> some yeah. people want to do everything. Say, so, yeah, like, you know, being a like business it, owner, how do you? I'm very blunt. Okay. And I feel like I have to be because yeah. if I'm lying to you, if I try to soften it up, then you're not. Well, a lot of times you might not listen, gotcha. but I'm not abrasive. I'm mm-hmm. just honest. You don't sugarcoat. You, I ain't walking right. on the eggshells. And then I do sometimes, I do. <laughs> she I ain't do walking audits. on the eggshells. I do okay. audits. And I'll be like, <laughs> that's smart. Take that down. Yes. I was about to ask, do you ever have to tell people to separate 
They're personal from their branding? Yes, but sometimes it's still connected. So You are the brand. That's it, and I say it all the Got time. So you. if people know this is your brand over here, but they still know you as, and that's your brand, and you're on your regular site saying how somebody ugly and somebody child ugly or something uh-huh. very negative, you're about to lose customers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any demographic. Mm-hmm. Any. And this anyone. is not based and on anybody. Living in cancel culture. Yeah. yeah. It's not just with celebrities. Yeah. So how do you handle that cancel culture? Like being a branding consulting it, enterprise, yeah. how do you... Oh, Lord. It's very difficult because I do want people to be themselves. I don't necessarily believe in cancel culture but that's what's happening so you have to be extremely careful with what you approach Mm. and what you don't Mm. but if you stand on something like the whole Kyrie situation if he stand on it I commend him for standing on it someone tell me I really believe in this okay don't go back now because Uh, you stand when once you put it out there we're not changing it right we're not doing that we're not doing no PR (laughs) right we're not not, (laughs) like can we stand on it like, no, you better stand you on stay it. There. If that's something that you say and you're not going to take it back, whatever it is, I will help you figure out a way to say what you need to say in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Why is it so important that you stand on it, though, <laughs> if you put yourself out there on something? Right, because you are your word. Your word is everything, right? I believe Is that, that. what it comes down to? Just I, that, do, I do believe in having some respect for your word. And now if you change your mind, say you learned something different. Right, right. That's different. You apologize. You right. do a but statement. I, I it doesn't you, damage your authenticity. I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest about my own self. I'm a sports fan. Yeah. And I had made a joke about playoff P. Like Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. he kept saying, Oh, yeah. I'm playoff P, I'm playoff P. Right. So he never actually never did up. anything. Never showed up. So when I read that he was dealing with depression. I actually, because I was making, I was doing jokes on Facebook about it, everything. So afterwards, after I found out that, because I'm also a mental health advocate. Oh, wow. You couldn't go on I went and I wrote a whole statement about my apology. He might not have ever seen it, Mm -hmm. but somebody else, somebody else that knows me or somebody other child that knows me, they may feel, they see that and they see that I have learned from my mistakes and my judgment. Mm -hmm. So... Once, if you do learn something and you feel different, coming back and being grown about it, not fake, but yeah. <laughs> right. being, That's real, a different... being real and grown about it is how you, if you do have a true change of heart, but not just because it's trendy to be changing. That's mm-hmm. what I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to come from a place of realness. Right. Because That's sometimes big, people, they just flip flop too yeah. much. And that's, oh, because you saw somebody else do mm-hmm. that and this and this. Everything is just what's trendy. And we fall into it in so many different ways. Now, how do you decipher between that? Because if you're a branding consultant, I know you're all on each social media site and on each trend. So how do you (laughs) handle that? (laughs) Not falling into that. Sometimes what I would do, it depends on the client. Are leveraging it. How do you? Like, I would see, okay, this is trendy. You know what? This might be good for you to do. Mm -hmm. This fits your personality. This portion of the podcast is brought to you by Lynx Recording Studio. Lynx is a premier audio and video recording studio in the greater Charleston area with four completely different booths, multiple peripherals, and four producers. They have the ability to service all facets of audio and video creativity. If you need to record a song, a podcast, create a demo, or even take headshots and complete drops for Hollywood film, they've done it. Call them at 843-879-9386 or find them online at linksrecordingstudios.com. That's links, L-Y-N-X, recordingstudios.com. And that's something that I have to do. I have to learn all of these people' personalities. So you gotta bring this to them. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> and I have to know who they are, and not just their business, their home life. And that's where the life coaching come in, okay. because oh, okay. I feel like if your life is a mess, your business will be a mess. And so none of my clients is not just oh, we're gonna do this for business. <laughs> it's everything. So it's a full marketing platform when you do their brand 
It's everything from A to Z. Yes. They're fitting into that brand yes. that they're creating. When you see it, and we know that you're working on it, it's not just a facade. It's not right. like somebody I, just trying to hide. I like how you said earlier, you're talking about being like like PR stuff. Mm-hmm. Technically, you don't do PR. You no. really are building brands right. from the ground up. It's not just PR. Goal in, in Fix go- mistakes. Scandal. Right. Scandal. Yeah, you I love that yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they do call me like the hood Olivia mm-hmm. Pope. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But people don't understand the difference between the PR and a branding consulting. It's right. It's, and it, strategies. It's, it's two right. different it's things. Very, like, we have to start from the ground up. Foundation, mission statement, mm-hmm. why. Yeah, <laughs> You come across uh-huh. like in to your customers, like target audience. Right. Mm-hmm. That, when I Preach. Ju- that ahead, one, get on them. I'd be like, what's the target audience? Everybody. No. Narrow, that, narrow I, down. If you're selling to everybody, you're selling to no one. Repeat that one more time for audience. Yes. If you're selling to everybody, you're selling to no one. Yes. Because everyone is different. Mm-hmm. Just if you have children. And you have multiple children. They all different. You have to speak to them different. You have to correct them in a different way. It, like they like different clothes or whatever yeah. the situation may be. So you need to figure out who you want to be your client. And I say narrow it all the way down. Like age, class, and what type of glass of wine do like red or white? Wow. <laughs> because this will help you figure out how are you going to brand to them and market how mm-hmm. to speak out to. This. And it helps narrow down your marketing schemes and tactics. Yeah. And so you're not just jumping all over the place. Mm-hmm. If you're a 23-year-old hairstylist, probably your target audience is probably going to be people younger than you. And then maybe just a little bit like, so you need to immerse yourself in everything. They, what type of music they like. If they listen to Lotto, you need to be listening to Lotto too. Like, you need to be good know. Points. <laughs> like, good, good points, y'all. Good you points. You need to know how to relate <laughs> To them, the lingo, you, yeah. exactly the lingo, the hairstyle, the culture, yes. everything. Yeah. yeah, yes, and that's something that and when people have already started and they have to come in on the back end, breaking breaking down what they used to do, yeah, and building up what they're doing now is that's the most difficult, <laughs> the most difficult part. I was about to say because this. I, and I will tell you, you are blowing my mind with this right now because <laughs> I understood what a brand was. Like, you think trademark brands and all this stuff, but you don't think about everything that goes into it. Is this expensive? Now, that's what I must ask because, all right, could you explain this? Because, again, having to know how this stuff works properly, what are we talking about cost-wise when it comes to having a brand created? Just like our ballpark figures for one person, so, influencer. Uh, if I, I like to start from the total beginning. Okay. Like, and most of the time, though, I do work with people from the beginning, and then maybe I offer three months okay. for you to start up. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's just every month people have me on retainer. But for your first starting out, for me, it's a thousand dollars. That's understandable. That, and, but uh, that's not say, counting you more, you your trademark <laughs> See? and copyright and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't do that. I send them to a paralegal. She oh. does that. And then you also have to pay your fees for whether you're getting copyright or trademark in your state or federal. Mm-hmm. And those are different as well. Okay. And I will help you go through all the stages of getting everything that you need for those particular things because you got to have certain things to show, like whether you're trademarking a tagline or a logo, mm-hmm. whatever, it's certain things. But if I don't know how to do it, I'm not doing it. I do have a team of people that they can do that type of stuff. You have folk that you could refer them to with the professional acumen <laughs> right. to get so the job done. Right, so if you're really talking about getting completely started mm-hmm. with everything, say it's about 3000 Okay, roughly. Yeah, yes, roughly. roughly. I, I'm having those numbers, <laughs> especially for our audience, so that they can have or have some kind of conceptualization around what it really is out there. Instead of just thinking, I'm just going to get my $100 together yeah. and go jump on my Instagram and they'll be popping yeah. tomorrow. Or, and, and, or people be like, oh, all you need is $150 to get an LLC. <laughs> okay, but just because you have an LLC, that doesn't mean you have a business. You better yes. find some funding. Like, it, yes. it, it takes a lot more than that. So that those statements get on my nerves and tax time come around. We're going to start seeing them again because people like to tell other people what to do with their life. But 
that's just you know oh, that's a good point <laughs> like, yeah yeah you're right. this, it's gonna come out mm-hmm. soon it's it's not true yeah like it, it takes a lot more than that it's so many people that have llc's right now that they don't know what to do with them i was about to ask too with coming out of the pandemic i know we did see the influx is like explosion of people creating their own businesses <laughs> <laughs> and having llc's and etc do you think that is all a trend and that we will see that reverse and that cycle all the way down and we'll I, I weed out those don't. people. You think I it's going to stay? I don't think because a lot of people got tired of working when okay. the yeah. pandemic hit. Yeah. We had some people with the stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but I do know a lot of people that was like, I can't, like, I had clients call me at work. I'm quitting my job today. I can't do it anymore. I like, need you. Yes. I can't. I'm burnt. <laughs> yeah. I'm burnt out. Especially people in the medical field. Yeah. So I do believe, and especially in our community, I do see a lot of positive changes, even with not just having a business, but sharing. Like, we sometimes we're gatekeepers. Okay. We don't want to tell people how we got on. We don't want to tell people mm. the magic sauce because mm. we think that's going to leave us out. But I do see a difference. I do see more people coming together. And that's something I'm very big on. I like to bring people together. Yeah. And that's a great thing that we do here at Upstate Circle of Friends also. But I do see it growing. I do see a community of Black entrepreneurs growing together and coming together and gaining more knowledge mm-hmm. together. So that we could have more of our own. Especially if your sister does that training. Yeah. Get on it. <laughs> Them training <laughs> videos. No, that's mm-hmm. a like, pivotal and point. We, we just got, I, that's one thing. We could do so much together. Yeah. And we should be. I know we were having, Kevin and I were having this conversation the other day about groups and different communities. How, and this is funny because I heard this guy say this on a YouTube podcast, but, oh, or a podcast that was on YouTube, but the gentleman said, oh, yeah, us. Yeah, we help everybody in our community. I won't say the name of the community, but we help everybody in our community. We always reach back and pull our friends up. If I have a friend over here, I'm not going to send you over here to this other business. I'm sending you to my friend. If you have this issue going on, you need some shoes, you're going to one of my friends. And like you said, for some reason, when it comes to us, we don't understand that yet. I think it's going to come to a point, it's coming to a head right now. We understand, okay, I understand. It's not that you're, and I always tell people, it's not that I'm hating or disliking somebody else, but can I love myself? That's correct. Is it okay for me to that, love me? Do you not want me to love me? If so, what's wrong with you telling me I can't love myself? <laughs> <laughs> you went extremely deep on that because I think that's a community issue, but I believe it is a culture Yep. It's a black people issue. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to just put it out it there. Sure we, a lot of us, do not love ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so, to the root. as a collective, mm-hmm. to the root. we don't love ourselves mm-hmm. because individually, we don't love ourselves. Which goes back to slavery. Mm-hmm. Because were we ever taught that we were important or good? No. Or we were not. Yourself. Beat down for right. years. Yeah, exactly. Beat it out, beat so, it, it is very difficult for us. Like sometimes I be I see great things happening and I'm like I wish this wasn't big news like when you it see it shouldn't be right this is like, <laughs> just be like it was normal why are we I wish so it was zealous? normal it's simple. It's I simple wish stuff. it was some of the things that we do that's great I'm happy for it uh-huh. but I wish it was just normal like a common thing a, this yes. should be common yes. yes I just see this every day <laughs> right every day every but day. we have to work more on the internal mm-hmm. loving ourselves a little bit more as people and then maybe. It, we won't be afraid of each other yeah. so much. Do you see this coming through when you're doing your branding work? Oh, I would assume. Yes. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they don't if they don't love themselves, they don't know themselves. Yep. So, so when you're trying you to get brand, them to answer how that can you why? brand? Yeah. Right. You don't yeah, even know yeah. what you're branding. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So do you prefer clients allow you to take full creative control when handling their brand? Or do you want them engaged in the process and... I would like on. to have engagement. Okay. I really do. I don't want to create a bunch of little Jamaicas. <laughs> like, I know people that do that. Yeah. Or they'll be like, oh, just let me do your page or let me do... I don't like that yeah. because it's not you. And it's... I want you to be incorporated into your brand. So if I just take over completely... That's no, not fair. Because yeah. I have a nine-year-old client. I have to... And my oh. daughter helps with that, but she's about to be 20. But... 
it's still, I got to think, how would this nine-year-old mm-hmm. age, and when I'm writing out certain things, right? Yeah. Yes. So, Hashtag. So I like, to, that nine-year-old kind of grown. Right. <laughs> right. So if like I that. just went in and just was like, talking like me, it would have been like some grown, very hood. So <laughs> I have to, I have, we have Zoom calls and things like that. So I can, how she speaks and she, I'll send it to her. She's like, yes, that's it. You got it. You oh, got good. it. Nine-year-old. Yeah. Nine-year-old. Nine-year-old. I'm like, okay, yes. You know, so what's the uh, diversity of your clientele? I <laughs> mostly work with nonprofits. Okay. And small Black business owners. Understood, yeah. Uh, but the small black businesses are very different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, it's, it's all around the border. Yes, border. nurses, uh, paralegals, podcasts. Nine-year-old children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clothing, boutiques, realtors, event planners. Mm-hmm. Just, it's, it's an array. Mi- mix of everything. Yes, yes. And... It is. I'm not going to say I, I wouldn't work with anyone, but for me, I do enjoy helping the black community. Yeah. Would you be, how about to ask that? Would you be open to branching out and working with corporate entities? I don't think so. Okay. That's why I asked, because I know you said nonprofit <laughs> to start off. And then I, yes. So, yeah. So, yes, if, I work with three, three nonprofits right now. And it's actually probably the hardest. The I was about to ask, are, yeah. Because it's a lot. It's not somebody just trying to make money so they can live. It's we're trying to find resources. Mm-hmm. I do things to fund something that's really meaningful. Mm-hmm. For me, it's difficult because I take that with me. I put my passion into everything. So those are the most difficult ones. But I don't think I would want to do that. Other people ask me that. So Coca-Cola came and they was ringing that doorbell and they had that check. And that check said $15 million. They're like, Yo, can if you help us with some branding for the black community? That's what they would say. <laughs> if it said 15, we got a new Sprite know. commercial. I, we I, need Chris know, Brown I, on it. I'm, <laughs> she bought a chain. I bought one even bigger. I'm trying, <laughs> trying to be out here. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a question I always have. It's almost like the right now the current Deion Sanders Jackson State question. Deion Sanders, you're doing so well at Jackson State. Would you be willing to go to a big school like Michigan, etc.? And I wouldn't want him to. He turned it down. He finally told his players, he's like, I'm not leaving. So that's the thing for me. I do, I'm not, I love being (laughs) successful, Mm -hmm. but I know that this is my calling and my purpose. And that's Mm -hmm. bigger than anything else. Mm -hmm. That's why you can say no. (laughs) No. She knows. (laughs) She ain't messing up Coca-Cola. No no Sprite over here. So you do a lot. So how do you manage your work-life balance and everything? Mm. Like you said, mental health is important. Self-care. This one, I'm going to feel guilty about because I really don't. I kind of work and then I crash. So you work a good under pressure, fourth quarter. Put her in the game, coach. Oh, she Jordan. (laughs) Put her in the game. She Jordan. I'm working on it, though. I am. Because I do know that it's much needed. I take time, like I said, when I'm downloading, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I have enough time chilling. Yeah. Do you sleep well at night? Get no, your rest? I have insomnia, but that's because I have PTSD. Okay, so. So I mean, and you, like you said, you're an empath, so you feel yeah. an energy. Like, I know how you feel because I don't really have a lot of time, but I get a lot of stuff done. And it's done successfully and well, but it's I don't even know how I'm managing. I don't even know how I'm here right now. Yes. Thank strength of God. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, literally. Yeah, no, yeah, I really right. don't. She's right. Yes. So I can right. understand what you're talking I just, about. I just feel Go. like you just keep yeah, going. that I got to I just got to do this. That's that New Yorker state of mind. <laughs> yeah, She's a man. New Yorker, y'all. No, seriously. <laughs> Plus, like you think about it, you know you're necessary and that you're needed. That's also fuel to the fire. You push it forward. If it's almost, I know they always talk about life expectancy and that men's life expectancy is less than women's because <laughs> by the time we get to 70, they don't need us no more. <laughs> so like at least with women, they're like, yo, can you hold this grandbaby? Would you mind watching this? Can we get some cornbread cooked? And so because of that, y'all live 80, 85. We just <laughs> 72. We're like, ah, they don't need us no more. Let me go ahead and move on to the next level. <laughs> and so we go to see the ancestors. Oh, and so I, I think that is true in this case. Something wrong with you. <laughs> I, I, I want to see our men around a little bit longer. Y'all yeah. get, I, we need I, to be I, useful. That's all we got to start learning how to make cornbread or something, man. Yes. <laughs> and definitely changing diapers and stuff like that. So y'all can yeah. be around longer. Yeah, yeah I think y'all probably just need to slow down hey. your mental. Slow hey. down your mental. That goes back to the meditation. Y'all should come do some yoga with me. 
on our Y'all, um, she trying to get my wife want to go. My wife do want to go to your class. She's your arm when she keeps showing me your. So I'm just leave it to my store. We um, we just recorded a podcast and we had a topic about men's health and really, if you look at in celebrities and probably people, yeah. there has been a lot of men. 50 and under dying, yes. whether it has been natural causes or violence. Yes. Men yes. are not taking care of their stress levels. No, cortisol's out of the room. <laughs> so, yes, y'all need to get to yoga. Y'all need to get to therapy. Something. Not just football games every yes. Sunday. Oh, oh. What do they say? They say in winter, they put all the sports on for men so we can help us with our sad, mm-hmm. our seasonal affected <laughs> seasonal dep- depression. Yeah, depression. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes, yeah. look, I know because October is my favorite month because every sport is on. Yeah, it starts. Okay? Yeah, it pops. But it can be stressful, it especially does. like the Lakers right now. Oh my! <laughs> they they stressing me out. They need to leave so, LeBron <laughs> on the bench right now. <laughs> they stress me out. Like <laughs> it stress me out. Yeah. So we. Men, we need y'all to go we need other ways. and go to the doctor. Yeah. Don't be afraid. If you need to find a black doctor, find one. Because yeah. I know sometimes... Uh, yeah, that's part of d- the fear d- for there. that. Yeah, so seeing somebody who's not in your community and then trusting their, their evaluation of you. Yes. Knowing that yes. there is difference between... And it's scientifically proven. There's difference between races on how certain medicines affect you, dosage amounts. Also, le- reading certain levels in your blood are different. And if you don't have somebody who's aware of that, you won't feel safe. Even you know? therapists, if you need to find a black therapist, do that as well. And I know this is off topic. However, it just came in my mind, so I spoke it. <laughs> no, nah, it's on brand. Because we definitely, we need y'all. Yeah. We do. As Aww. much as y'all need us. Look, you feel important now. Oh, yeah, you feel good. See, I may His stick around until 85. Went up. I may stick around. <laughs> so, do you have an idea, not an idea, but a client that you want to work with that you haven't? Yes. I always say that my dream client would be, and I I don't want to sound sexist, but a young man that is going to be in the pros, but I want to start working with him in high school. Because I am a sports fanatic. That's what you're saying. I, these stories of these situations where these young men ruin their lives with so many bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I would love to get a hold of them before the world does. And not just me, but surrounding a foundation for them to have a great team around them so they're not making the mistakes that so many of them are making. There's too many people that are just eager to get from them and that it bothers it bothers me so that is the one client that I would love to have and I would do that just for free I like that answer <laughs> y'all hear y'all that's y'all, yeah, y'all hear that I love that answer because it's almost <laughs> in a protective situation and I don't get that with a lot of a lot of young athletes whether they be male or female or otherwise not going to people that actually have their best interests mm-hmm. mind to keep them in a focused and safe environment so that they can achieve properly and then bring it back to the community or their that's it, bring it back to the bring it back bring it back <laughs> to the community correct yeah. not OJ Simpson status <laughs> and we run into that issue all of the time and it doesn't matter where you're at I'll put it like this case in point Brittany Griner she ain't got her community with her my fault I'll deal with that later but her community's not with her if we if she, she was still with our community. We still owned her. I'll put it like that. I doubt she'd be having that issue that she's having right now. And it's a sad situation. It's sad. But the one thing I did say, too, is that she also, people like, oh, free her, free her. Yes, that's true. But she knew she was over there. That's my point. So her at the same community. time, she had, she should have known better. But somebody should have been there if Brittany got that in her she do that. Yes. Like, you're like, Britt, you need to get on this phone. You need yes. to get to the plane. Make yes. sure you drop that stuff. Make sure you stuff. got that, yeah. I.e., when it's time for bags to be packed, you <laughs> ain't packing it. You're packing it and clean. <laughs> this is my point. She's not in her community. I can't talk the way I want to talk, I really want to say, but she's not in her community. So the people that were, quote unquote, there to look out for her really did not have her interest right. at hand. Right. just wanted Brittany to be happy being Brittany. And at that time, it sometimes takes people in your own community to tell you, 
No, stop. Because stop. I just don't even just be like, oh, brands. No, when you go somewhere to speak, I'm there. I'm asking you what Thank you're wearing, you. what your Thank head's you. like. This, I'm full. I'm all in. Yeah. Thank you. Not just because yeah. I'm very, I'm a protector. And I want to make sure you look good all the time. It doesn't have nothing to do with it don't. anything else. But making sure you rise to the top and you continue also to be happy and healthy. It's refreshing but, to hear. Like we we need to make sure like that if you know somebody <laughs> is doing stuff that they not supposed to be doing and they can ruin their whole life, somebody gotta be like, nah, don't do that. You keep it real with you know, them. It's like, as easy as keeping you from driving. Under the influence. Simple thing. So simple. Yeah. Right. And some people just be like, oh, whatever. That's to me, that's not, you don't love them. Accountability yeah. partner. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like we, I'm just, I'm that type and I'm small, but I'll be like, you're not getting in that car. What you doing? I'm like, <laughs> that brown will come out. You can, you can be like, still? text me when you get there, when you arrive, when you yeah. leave. Yeah. 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 I like yes. that. And we need more like that. We have to protect one another. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Man, you made me feel good. Yeah. That made my day. <laughs> so what can we expect from you and your business? Okay. Outside of the branding, I, we do have the second season of Man Cave coming up. And we're oh. doing something totally different this time. I don't know if anybody's seen Man Cave with Southside Dre. <laughs> but we popping a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're definitely doing things a little bit different this time around. The second season will be premiering soon. And I'm soon to be working on my own podcast. Okay. Dope. That's Dope. cool. And that one is just simply letting people tell their story, like, about life, period. Because people tell me so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, you really went through that? You should let other people know how you came out on the other side. Yeah, because yeah, you're getting all these stories firsthand. Yeah. Right. What did it build? So I know it's a lot on your mind. You yes. have a name yet? I do, but I'm not going to say it because I told somebody and then they took it. Like, Ooh, and so I had to change it. Mm -hmm. So see, you, that was my fault. Yeah. Telling them and then also not having it trademarked already. Yes. Yeah. Before releasing right. the information. Right, so that's bad for the brand strategist. I made a mistake. Y'all heard that. Y'all yeah. heard that. That's a lesson to learn, <laughs> yeah. audience. Lesson to learn. So Excellent. how can people find you on social media, website, book um, you? You can find me on Instagram or TikTok as Meet the Creator. You can also find our business on Instagram and Facebook, 24K Enterprise. And we also have a website, 24KEnterprise.com. And as my sister says, if you don't see it on the website, still ask because we get it done. I know that. You oh. need a hashtag. That, that's a hashtag right there. Put that on the seriously. shirt. No, seriously. I like your necklace. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank too. you. I'm a Libra. <laughs> and <laughs> it's funny because you have the balance post and I, I I don't feel like I have a lot of balance. So I'm trying to gain it. Like, because I'm the type of person, I will go from like zero to 100 like that. Real quick. Or I'm going to be super passionate or just cut you off completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am very into learning more and more about myself. So I try to figure out, why you do, why do you do this? Yeah. You do what you, why you like this? Why do you think like this? So yeah, this is just a reminder. And I always do certain things to, everything I wear has a point. Yeah. Yeah. How many yeah. times a day do you ask yourself why? <laughs> How many hours? Twenty-four. Right. Okay. <laughs> Every hour. Why? Yes, I do. Why, Lord? Why? Yes. <laughs> like, That's a good practice. And I ask though. myself why. Yeah. Like, Girl, why? Yeah. Why you do this? Mm -hmm. Why you sign up for this? Why are you not just at home chilling? <laughs> but good that's point. when I know you know why. This is your purpose. Yeah. Supposed to be doing this. So get to it. <laughs> Man, you done made my day today. I'm not going to lie. It's a great conversation. I appreciate you hanging out with us today. Literally hanging out with us <laughs> it's, today. It's truly been my pleasure. You all are amazing. Thank you. And I, I wish, you know, the best for you all. Like, I'm going to be, like, listening. Tuning in. And, yes, Please, and tell everybody Likewise. else yeah, about yeah. it. Because this is wonderful. Yeah, refer refer your clients to us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll give them. <laughs> you get got it. This. this is DJ and what? With Miss Tamaya. What's up, y'all? Skip in the background. Yep, yep. And Miss Jamika, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. We appreciate you. We'll be signing out for the Hilltop Club podcast. Hope everybody has a beautiful Saturday. Go out there, tell somebody you love them. Peace. Bye.
That's it for today's episode of the Hilltop Glove Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Hilltop Glove.